Imagine yourself in two scenarios. First, a promotion at work comes up and you hesitate, questioning, what if I'm not good enough? Second, you receive a compliment from a colleague and immediately think they're just being kind. These are clear signs of self-sabotage, moments where you might be underestimating yourself without realizing it. Drawing inspiration from the wisdom of Stoicism, let's explore 11 of these signs. Stoicism reminds us of the importance of trusting our capabilities and accepting our virtues. If you identify with three or more of these signs, it might be the ideal time to confront uncertainties and embrace the vast potential within you. This video was made with someone like you in mind. Let's uncover together how to overcome these obstacles. Ready to start? Sign 1. Excessive Self-Criticism In a world that often pressures us to be the best, it's easy to fall into the trap of excessive self-criticism. Have you ever found yourself reproaching yourself for a minor mistake at work, ignoring all the times you exceeded expectations, perhaps that report you delivered with a slight delay, but which, in the end, received praise for its exceptional content? Yet the only thing that stayed in your mind was the delay. Does this sound familiar? Stoic philosophy teaches us that we should not disturb ourselves with things outside our control, including the past and the small mistakes we make. Marcus Aurelius, one of the most renowned Roman emperors and Stoic philosopher, advises us to be kind to ourselves, reminding us that error is human and that growth comes not from punishment, but from understanding and overcoming. On a daily basis, this means re-evaluating how you react to your own mistakes. Instead of criticizing yourself for not achieving perfection, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? This approach not only eases the weight of self-criticism, but also transforms errors into stepping stones for your personal growth. Another practical example can be found in how you deal with feedback at work. If you receive constructive criticism, instead of internalizing it as a personal failure, see it as an opportunity to develop your skills and strengthen your stoic virtues, such as wisdom and courage. Remember, Stoicism does not encourage us to be impassive, but rather to be rational about where we direct our mental energy. Focusing on self-improvement and not on self-depreciation is at the heart of this philosophy. By practicing this change of perspective, you'll not only reduce excessive self-criticism, but also open space to appreciate your achievements and qualities more, recognizing that each step, even those involving errors, is part of a larger journey toward personal excellence. So, the next time you find yourself caught in a cycle of self-criticism, take a pause and reflect, am I being fair to myself? Allow yourself to learn from each experience and move forward with the confidence that you are, day by day, building a more resilient and wise version of yourself, aligned with the stoic teachings of continuous growth and self-compassion. Sign to Discounting Compliments Do you remember the last time someone complimented you and without thinking you countered with a, oh, it was nothing? This is a classic sign that you might be underestimating your achievements and skills. But let's change things up here. Imagine this scene. You've just finished a complex project and instead of accepting the applause, you hide in the shadows of, I could have done more. Sound familiar? Now let's do a stoic exercise. Imagine that each compliment you receive is a coin. Every time you discount a compliment, it's like throwing that coin away. Over time, you would be throwing away a fortune in recognition and self-worth. The Stoics, like Seneca and Epictetus, teach us the value of authenticity and self-recognition. They encourage us to accept each coin of compliment, not out of vanity, but as a just acknowledgement of our work and virtue. Think of it this way. If a friend achieved the same feat, would you compliment them? Then why not accept the same for yourself? The next time someone compliments you, try simply saying, thank you. Feel the weight of that coin of recognition in your hand and allow yourself to value what you did to deserve it. To make this even more practical, how about a challenge? For the next week, every time you receive a compliment, write it down in a journal. At the end of the week, read all the compliments and reflect on them. This exercise not only helps you recognize your value, but also to see patterns in your skills and achievements that you might be overlooking. By integrating this practice into your life, you start to build a treasure of self-esteem and confidence based on the acknowledgement of your virtues and efforts. This is not just an exercise in acceptance, but a path to a fuller and more fulfilled life, 
aligned with stoic teachings of valuing one's nature and capabilities. Remember, each compliment is an opportunity to see yourself through someone else's eyes, a view that is often more generous and true than our internal critique. Accept this gift. Sign 3. Excessive fear of failure. Picture this scene, you're at a party, surrounded by friends who suggest a game of skill, something you've never tried before. The idea excites but also terrifies you. What if I make a fool of myself, you think, allowing the fear of failure to prevent you from participating and, potentially, from having fun and learning something new? This is just one example of how the excessive fear of failure can seep into various aspects of life, not just professional but also social and personal. This fear is not just about avoiding defeat, it's about self-image and vulnerability in front of others. Stoicism, a philosophy with roots in ancient Greek and Roman thought, offers us valuable insight into this dilemma. Epictetus, one of its most celebrated thinkers, teaches us to differentiate between what is and what is not within our control. According to him, while we cannot control the outcomes of our actions, we have complete dominion over our efforts and attitudes. Therefore, when the fear of failure threatens to paralyze us, we can turn to this stoic teaching. Ask yourself, what is within my reach? Focus on giving your best on learning and growing from the experience, regardless of the outcome. This shift in focus is liberating, as it shifts the value from external success to internal growth and resilience. Moreover, the Stoics encourage us to see every obstacle as an opportunity for strengthening. Thus, instead of fearing failure, we can embrace it as a strict but fair teacher, challenging us to evolve. When we allow ourselves to fail, we remove the shackles of fear and open space for courage and innovation. Imagine now an alternate scenario at that party. You decide to join the game, laughing at yourself when you err and celebrating the small successes. This is the real victory, not because you won the game, but because you overcame fear. And if failure eventually comes, remember the stoic maxim, it's not the event itself that disturbs us, but the way we interpret it. Reframe failure as an essential stage in the human journey, a necessary step on the path of learning and self-discovery. By doing so, you not only diminish the power of fear over your actions, but also align more closely with stoic wisdom to live a full and courageous life. Sign 4. Paralyzing Perfectionism. Imagine you're planning a camping trip with friends. You've dreamed about this moment for months, envisioning the perfect bonfire, impeccable trails and starry nights. However, as you start organizing everything, you find yourself caught in minute details. The weather forecast has to be perfect, the equipment needs to be top-notch, and each meal must be planned to perfection. This obsession with perfection causes you to postpone the trip repeatedly. Paralyzing perfectionism claims its victim once again. This scenario, though simple, illustrates how perfectionism can prevent us from living enriching experiences. It's not just about completing tasks or achieving goals, but about how we allow the pursuit of perfection to deprive us of moments of joy and connection. The Stoics, with their millennia-old wisdom, invite us to reflect on this tendency. They teach us to seek progress, not perfection. Marcus Aurelius, for instance, spoke about the importance of doing the best possible within the circumstances given, without agonizing over what is beyond our control. He reminds us that perfection is an idealization that rarely reflects the complexity and beauty of reality. Applying this stoic view to our example, we can start to see the camping trip not as an event that needs to be perfect, but as an opportunity to enjoy nature, strengthen friendships, and grow through unexpected challenges. If it rains, we adapt and enjoy the sound of rain on the leaves. If we forget something, we improvise. Perfection, then, is not the absence of imperfections, but the ability to find beauty and value amidst the unpredictability of life. So, the next time you find yourself paralyzed by perfectionism, remember that life is a series of imperfect experiences. Each of them, with its flaws and surprises, offers the chance to learn, grow, and above all, live fully. Embrace the imperfect, allow yourself to experience and discover the freedom that comes from letting go of the chains of perfectionism. In doing so, you not only align more closely with Stoic teachings, but also pave the way for a richer and more meaningful life. Sign 5. Feeling like an imposter in everyday situations. 
Consider this scenario. You're at a family gathering where everyone begins to share their recent achievements, from job promotions to new interesting hobbies. When it's your turn, a wave of insecurity floods over you. What if my stories aren't as impressive? What if they judge me for not having achieved more? This is the imposter syndrome manifesting not in the world of art or in high professional spheres, but in the comfort of your home, among the people you love the most. Now let's apply a bit of Stoic philosophy to this scenario. The Stoics teach us that the value of our lives is not measured by external comparisons, but by the virtue and effort we put into our daily actions. As Seneca reminds us, it is not because things are difficult that we do not dare, it is because we do not dare that they are difficult. So imagine that instead of retracting, you share a small personal achievement, perhaps something as simple as starting to read more or dedicating yourself to learn something new, something that meant stepping out of your comfort zone for you. At that moment, you're not only challenging the imposter syndrome, you're redefining what it means to be successful in your own eyes and those of others. This exercise is not just about overcoming the fear of judgment. It's about recognizing that every step we take, no matter how small, contributes to the rich and unique tapestry of our lives. And that in itself is worthy of celebration. When facing similar situations, remember the stoic advice. Focus on what is within your reach. Your actions, your choices, your willingness to grow and learn are the true measures of your worth. The imposter syndrome feeds on doubt but thrives in the darkness of inaction. By acting, by sharing, by simply being yourself, you light a lamp that dissipates those shadows of doubt. In short, the next time you feel like an imposter in your social or family circle, take a deep breath and remember. Your journey is unique, your achievements are valid, and your story deserves to be told. You belong exactly where you are, not as an imposter, but as an authentic individual, carving your own stoic path toward personal fulfillment. Sign 6. Difficulty asking for help. Have you ever faced a challenge or problem, knowing that asking for help would be the simplest solution, yet you hesitated? Perhaps the thought of, I should be able to solve this on my own, or what will they think of me, crossed your mind. This reluctance to seek support is not just a reflection of pride or fear of judgment. It's a sign that you might be underestimating yourself and the value of collaboration. Now let's take a creative turn and explore this through a daily activity, preparing a complex meal for a special event. You choose a new recipe, perhaps a dish you've always wanted to try but never had the courage to. As you proceed, you realize you're missing a crucial ingredient or aren't sure about one of the steps. The hesitation to ask for help can turn an enjoyable experience into a source of unnecessary stress. Here, Stoic wisdom offers a valuable perspective. Stoics value self-sufficiency, yes, but they also recognize the importance of community and mutual support. Marcus Aurelius, for instance, talked about the interdependence of human beings, highlighting that helping others and accepting help is not a weakness, but an expression of our social nature. Imagine then that instead of fretting alone in the kitchen, you decide to call a friend who knows how to cook or seek advice on an online forum. This simple act of asking for help not only solves your immediate problem, but also strengthens bonds, shares knowledge, and transforms the act of cooking into an experience of connection and learning. This example shows us that the difficulty in asking for help can be overcome when we recognize that we are part of a broader community where each contributes with their unique skills. By doing so, we not only enrich our own lives, but also the lives of those around us. So, the next time you find yourself hesitant to ask for help, remember, reaching out is not a sign of weakness, but an opportunity for growth, connection, and discovery. Whether in the kitchen or any other aspect of life, the courage to admit that we don't have all the answers is, paradoxically, one of the greatest acts of strength. Sign 7. Difficulty setting high goals. Think for a moment about a video game. On the start screen, there are different levels of difficulty, easy, medium, and hard. Naturally, most of us start on easy to get the hang of it, but what if we never moved on to the more challenging levels? We'd be, in a way, underestimating ourselves, missing the opportunity to explore the full potential of the game, and by extension, our own. Now bring that analogy to real life. How many times have you set your life goals on easy mode, 
For fear of failing or believing that more ambitious goals are beyond your reach, this behavior is a clear sign that you might be unnecessarily limiting yourself. Stoic philosophy teaches us to accept and embrace challenges as an essential part of human growth. Epictetus, with his clear-eyed view of human nature, encourages us not to shy away from difficulties but to face them head-on, recognizing that true value lies in the effort and the ability to overcome obstacles, not just in easy results. Imagine then that instead of settling for goals you know you can achieve without much effort, you decide to sign up for that marathon, start that ambitious personal project, or learn a new skill that has always seemed daunting. Each step toward these higher goals is like leveling up in the game of life, where each challenge overcome not only proves your capacity, but also expands your horizon of possibilities. By adopting this mindset, you turn the fear of failure into fuel for action. You start to see every attempt, successful or not, as a valuable lesson, a further step in your journey of self-knowledge and development. This is living according to Stoic principles, recognizing that while we have no control over outcomes, we have total mastery over our actions and our willingness to face challenges. So the next time you find yourself hesitating to set high goals, remember the video game of life. It's time to increase the difficulty, not because you have to prove something to anyone, but because you deserve to discover how far you can go. See challenges as opportunities to grow, learn, and ultimately become the most complete version of yourself. Sign 8. Minimizing your skills. Pulling back the curtain on a different stage. Let's imagine you're organizing a surprise party for a friend. You're responsible for decorating the space, preparing the food, and ensuring everything is in order for the big reveal. Friends and family praise your effort and skill in organizing such a complex event with such grace. However, instead of accepting these compliments, you quickly deflect them, saying something like, Oh, it was nothing. Anyone could have done it. This scenario reflects a common behavior, minimizing one's skills. You might think you're being modest, but in reality, you're underestimating the value of your work and the uniqueness of your talent. Now let's dive into a parallel narrative where you are the director of the movie of your life. Every decision you make, Every event you organize, every challenge you overcome, is an important scene in that movie. As the director, you have the power to see beyond the obvious, recognizing the effort and creativity behind each action. Stoic philosophy teaches us to value our role in the world not through ego, but by acknowledging that each of us brings something unique to the table. Marcus Aurelius, emperor and philosopher, reminds us that we must do the work of our own life with dignity and sincerity, not minimizing our contributions but celebrating them as an essential part of the fabric of the universe. So, the next time someone praises your work, try to see it through the lens of the director. See the merit in your ability to orchestrate memorable moments, in your skill to transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. Allow yourself to receive these compliments not as mere words of courtesy, but as authentic recognition of your talent and effort. By doing so, you not only reaffirm your value, but also inspire others to recognize and value their own abilities. Transform minimization into celebration, recognizing that, in the grand narrative of life, each of us has a unique and indispensable role to play. Sign 9. Avoidance of spotlight or attention. You're at a lively party surrounded by friends and acquaintances when suddenly the idea of a dance contest comes up. Your heart races with the possibility of participating and even winning, but something inside you pulls back. What if everyone looks at me? What if I mess up the steps and become the center of attention for all the wrong reasons? This impulse to withdraw to avoid the chance to shine is a clear sign that you might be avoiding spotlight or attention, even when part of you wishes to be under the spotlights. Now imagine a twist in this scenario. Instead of pulling back, you decide to face that fear. You step onto the dance floor, not with the certainty that you'll be perfect, but with the desire to express yourself and enjoy the moment. This act of bravery transforms the experience, regardless of the outcome of the dance. Here, Stoic philosophy offers us a valuable perspective. Stoics teach us to focus only on what is within our reach, accepting what is beyond our control, like the opinion of others. Epictetus encourages us to see the fear of judgment as a self-imposed obstacle whose overcoming is a form of freedom. 
So when facing situations that put you in the spotlight, remember that others' perception of you is not what defines your worth. What truly counts is your courage to fully participate in life, expressing your ideas, sharing your passions, and yes, dancing as if no one were watching. This step toward vulnerability, accepting the possibility of spotlight, is where true growth and authenticity blossom. It's not about seeking attention, but about not letting the fear of it restrict your experiences. Thus, going forward, when the chance to stand out knocks at your door, inspire yourself to move forward, not in the absence of fear, but in the choice not to be governed by it. Discovering your strength in that choice can open new horizons filled with joys and surprising discoveries. Sign 10, feeling of not belonging. You decide to venture into a local science fair attracted by the promise of innovative discoveries and creative projects. Upon arrival, you're greeted by fascinating inventions and detailed presentations on technological advancements, sustainability, and space exploration. As you admire the exhibitors sharing their passions and deep knowledge, a doubt begins to emerge. Do I belong to this world? Are my ideas or questions too simple to be here? This feeling of being out of place as if you weren't qualified enough to contribute or fully participate reflects the sensation of not belonging. Yet, here lies an opportunity to apply a valuable stoic teaching. The importance of recognizing that our value doesn't come from comparisons with others, but from our own effort to learn and grow. Marcus Aurelius, a prominent Stoic, reminds us to focus on our own journey and progress, not on where others are in their paths. So imagine asking a question during one of the presentations, even if internally you hesitate. This act is not just an expression of your desire to learn, but also an affirmation of your presence and interest. You begin to realize that the science fair is less about displaying prior knowledge and more about curiosity, exploration, and the celebration of the collective quest for understanding and innovation. The true essence of belonging in a space like a science fair isn't in the expertise you bring, but in the openness to discover, inquire, and connect with others through shared love for knowledge and innovation. Therefore, in future moments where doubt about your place in a new and challenging environment arises, Remember that true belonging is forged not by being the most informed in the room, but by being authentically engaged and open to learning. This is the key to transforming any space into one where you not only belong, but where your contribution is valued as an essential part of the tapestry of human discovery. Sign 11. Difficulty accepting success. You've finally completed that personal project you've been developing for months be it an innovative app, a piece of art, or even a blog about your travels. Positive feedback starts rolling in, praising your creativity and dedication. However, instead of feeling pride, an internal voice whispers, it was just luck. Anyone could have done it. This pattern of minimizing your achievements and attributing your success to external factors rather than recognizing your own effort and talent is a sign that you may have difficulty accepting success. Let's transform this scenario. Imagine that, instead of shying away from the compliments, you decide to organize a small celebration to mark the launch of your project. During the event, as you share your journey, the challenges faced, and the small victories along the way, you begin to see your accomplishment in a new light. Stoic philosophy offers us a lens through which we can reassess our relationship with success. Stoics believed that true merit comes from living according to our virtues and doing our best regardless of external results. As Seneca reminds us, we should not judge our life by the fruits we reap, but by the effort we apply, by the righteousness of our actions. By adopting this stoic perspective, you begin to understand that each step toward your goal was the result of your resilience, creativity, and hard work. The success of your project isn't a coincidence, but the natural outcome of your dedication and passion. In this new framing, celebrating your achievements becomes a way to acknowledge and thank yourself for the path traveled, an act of self-acceptance and appreciation for your abilities and efforts. This not only strengthens your self-esteem, but also motivates you to pursue new challenges and growth opportunities. So on your next journey, remember that accepting success is not an act of arrogance, but a celebration of your personal journey and the virtues you've cultivated along the way. 
By doing so, you not only honor your own work, but also inspire yourself and others to recognize and pursue their dreams with confidence and determination. We've journeyed together through these signs that, often without realizing, show us how we might be underestimating ourselves. Each story, each example was not just for reflection, but to empower us to recognize our true value and potential. If you saw yourself in any of these scenarios, know that you're not alone. The path to overcoming these barriers begins with a simple step, believing in yourself. And remember, Stoic philosophy isn't just a set of ideas from the past. It's a compass for modern life, guiding us to face challenges with courage, wisdom and authenticity. If this content resonated with you, consider joining our community. Here we explore not just philosophical concepts, but how to apply them in everyday life to live more fully and meaningfully. Hit that like if you found value in today's video and believe it can inspire others too. And speaking of inspiration, don't keep these reflections to yourself. Share this video with someone who, in your view, could also benefit from these words. Who knows, it might be just the nudge that person needed. Our dialogue on personal growth, challenges and the pursuit of a life aligned with our virtues is just beginning. Let's continue this journey of discovery and transformation together. Until next time!